Hey guys, it's Ben ASMR here. Hope you're doing uh, very, very well. Um, apologies for taking a little bit of a break. I've actually not been too well recently. Um, I'm slowly recovering, getting there. Um, if I do still sound a bit unwell, <laughs> I'm just at sort of the later end of, of recovering from being uh, unwell. So, um, yeah, just a quick apology for that. Um, today's video, um, I thought it'd be quite fun to do um, a, a video talking about some facts about England. Um, I'm obviously from England myself, um, so I thought I'd uh, rock the England football shirt today, um, and yeah, just do a bit of a soft-spoken one as well. Uh, something slightly different I'm going to do, I'm going to, um, let's give my stomach that, I'm going to chew some chewing gum, um, so that says uh, extra, it's Wrigley's, um, so probably one of the more well-known chewing gums in England, so a um, little free fact for you there, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop a couple of pieces of this in. Chew this and yeah, read the facts. I'm probably going to chew a bit more with my mouth open just so we can get the sounds. I've got no idea what this is going to sound like, so I hope it's okay for you. Okay. Crack on. Um, I'm taking these facts from um, a website called Tourism Teacher. I'll read the facts out and uh, I'll um, make my own comments on them as well if I think it's worth doing and if I can add anything to it. So, um, yeah, number one um, England is part of the United Kingdom and not the United Kingdom. Um, so I think it's quite a misconception with people who. Um, who aren't from the UK to think that England and the United Kingdom are the same they're not so the UK is made up of four countries so you've got England, Scotland, Wales Northern Ireland um, so the United Kingdom is that collection of uh, they're called constituent countries um, so the United Kingdom is the collection of all four England is just the biggest of the four constituent countries um, and I want to add is don't confuse Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland as the same country. They're not. Um, they're separate countries, technically. So, just another one there. Um, number two. Stonehenge mon Monument is over 4,000 years old. Um, it's in the south of England. Um, the Stonehenge, which is the collection of stones. Um, yeah, over 4,000 years old. Number three. Football was invented in England. So, football... Um, for my American viewers, obviously it's soccer, not football, but in England, the UK, we call it football. Um, obviously most of the world do. Um, so yeah, football was invented in England. Um, number four, London is the capital of England. Um, I can't remember if I said I was going to do facts about the UK or England, but it's facts about England. Um, and there's 55 as well, just so you know. Um, okay. Um, speaking of London, um, London itself has more than 200 museums, um, obviously over the course of England there's a heck of a lot more, um, but yeah, London itself has over 200 museums. Um, England has hosted three Summer Olympic Games, um, pretty sure that's up there with one of the most, if not the most, um, so... Yeah, in 2012, London officially became the first city to host the sports championship three times. So someone else might have done it by now, but in 2012, it was the most. Number seven, uh, fish and chips is the most famous dish in England. Um, I'm sure a lot of people could have probably guessed that. Um, yeah, apart from, uh, so chicken tikka masala is, is often seen as a, a national dish, but also fish and chips is as well. Um, but it does say here as well people often have the misconception that the dish was introduced in England however this may not be true as according to some sources the invention of fish and chips can be traced back to 15th century Portugal next uh, England has the world's oldest metro system uh, which is the London Underground um, 
but it opened in 1863 and it was a station that ran between Paddington and Farringdon okay next Harry Potter was filmed in England now there'll be a lot of Harry Potter fans out there um, some of the locations include uh, Durham, Alnwick, Le- Leavesden, I don't even know how to pronounce that one, maybe Leavesden, um, and Oxford as well, and it's got a few more locations. And um, anyone who's visited London will know that there's a platform nine and three quarters at King's Cross. Um, obviously you can't run through it like they do in the films, um, but yeah, it's a bit of a tourist attraction at King's Cross. Um, number 10 the Queen of England invented a dog breed so um, the late Queen of England Queen Elizabeth II is crediting, credited with inventing a hybrid dog breed the Doggy which is a cross between a Corgi and a Dachshund um, number 11 killing a swan was considered treason in England I'm pretty certain it is still a crime let's just have a look what it says here um, the British Crown owns yeah, so the the, the Crown owns all um, swans in, in open waters um, therefore under a law from the 12th century killing swans was considered to be treason until 1998 so pretty recently um, a person hurting or killing a swan could be, um, even be put to life in prison in the present day Killing a swan is not considered treason, uh, yet it can be classified as theft or of a criminal offence. So you would still probably get into a lot of trouble if you were hurt or killed this one. I never knew this one actually. Number 12 says double decker London buses are made in Egypt. So, yeah, apparently manufactured outside of England by an Egyptian automotive company uh, manufacturing commercial vehicles. Um, this is what I didn't know. So, uh, Big Ben Tower is officially named Elizabeth Tower. So, most people think Big Ben is the tower. Big Ben is actually the bell itself. Um, so, the tower is called the Elizabeth Tower. Excuse me. This one I didn't know. Big Ben is part of a palace. So, apparently, it's part of the Palace of Westminster. Okay, so I knew it was connected to Westminster. Um. England is known for fighting the shortest war. So the country also partic- participated in the shortest war in history, the Anglo Zanzibar War. The entire war only lasted between 38 and 45 minutes as the UK emerged as the winner. Number 16. Stephen Hawking was born in England. So, not too much to say about that, but he was born in uh, Oxford. Um, this is another one that's become a bit more uh, popular recently but there's a cheese rolling competition in England um, so every year in Gloucestershire um, a county in West England it, um, yeah, it's a cheese roll down a massive hill basically and people fling themselves afterward, after the cheese um, I'd recommend maybe checking that one out checking out some videos on YouTube because it's hilarious watching people fly down this hill after this cheese it's really funny <laughs> Um, apparently people from all over the world have participated in the race it, okay number 18 says don't irritate the royal guard in England so let's read more on this one so um, it basically just says the royal guards are allowed to shove people who touch them <laughs> so yeah if you're ever visiting England don't wind up the royal guard don't touch the horses reins and things like that just uh, yeah don't take the mic, basically. <laughs> um, number 19, Oxford University is located in England. So is Cambridge, loads of other really good universities. 20, the Beatles are originally from England, more specifically Liverpool. Um, I'm pretty certain, yeah, all four of them are from Liverpool. Um, again, if you ever do visit England, um, there's a museum, I believe, at, um, in Liverpool. So if you've got a chance to visit, I've never actually been personally, but um, but yeah. So, number 21, another football-related one. Uh, England hosted the FIFA World Cup in 1966. 
Um, England also won that World Cup. It's the only one they've ever won. At number 22, William Shakespeare was born in England. So, um, he was born in Warwickshire. Um, it gives a bit more information here about um, some of Shakespeare's work. But um, I'm sure most of you know who William Shakespeare is. Um, number 23, the Tower of London was a prison, a zoo and a palace. So it being quite a few different things as <laughs> the Tower of London. Now I did not know this, so... Number 24, New York State is larger than England. Um, so it says England may be a country, but it is smaller than the whole of New York State. New York State has an area of around 142,449 square kilometres. Whereas England is about 129,500. So, yeah, New York State isn't larger than the United Kingdom. So again, obviously, the United Kingdom consists of those four countries, not just England. And another one I did know here, number 25, the World Wide Web was invented by a British scientist, well, Tim Berners-Lee. Um, so yeah, invented the internet. Um, well, World Wide Web. Um, so, he is from London, born in London. Um, number 26, the top two names in uh, England are Oliver and Olivia, so very similar names. Um, yeah, you do encounter many, many people with those names. I know loads of people with those names. Uh, number 27, J.K. Rowling was born in England. Um, obviously, Harry Potter's author. Um, probably not too surprising that she <laughs> she was born in England, uh, but she was also born in Gloucestershire. Um, number twenty eight, the iconic red phone booths in England are decreasing. Yeah, you don't see them anywhere near as often um, as you used to. Even in my lifetime, I've seen them decrease. So from years ago, yes. Um, it says here, red phone booths are the most English thing ever. Unfortunately, they're seeing a major, almost 90% decline due to privatisation of British Telecom and the popularity of mobiles and other reasons. Number 29. More than 59 million people live in England. So as per a recent population report, England has around 59 million residents. 82% of the population is white. And the rest, 18%, are black, Asian, mixed, or any other ethnic group. Not that that matters, but yeah, it's on there. Number 30. Afternoon tea is an English creation. So, um, apparently it was... Um, the concept of afternoon tea was introduced in England by Anna the Seventh Duchess of Bedford in 1840. Uh, she wanted to have something that could curb hunger between meals. Fair enough. Number 31, um, another great one. England has free healthcare. So as part of, uh, as England is part of the UK, um, it has free healthcare in the form of the National Health Service, which we always call it NHS. The um, system was started in 1948 and ensures that basic healthcare is available to all, all people, regardless of their nationality and immigration status. Um, so, yeah, healthcare free, um, really, really important. Um, I know I personally, I have a, a very close family member who was really, really ill for a long time um, and needed an organ trans transplant. Um, and I feel so grateful for the NHS because if we didn't have that, I don't know how my family would have managed. I don't think we would have done, to be honest. Um, moving on, number 32. Uh, England's national symbol is the lion. Hence the three lions of the football team. Um, so again, not that surprising. Um, the national symbol of England is a lion, representing bravery and courage. And there we go. In fact, you'll also find three golden lions on England's official royal coat of arms. Uh, 33. The River Thames that flows through London has many bridges. So London Bridge is the most popular bridge on the River Thames, but it's not the only one. The River Thames, in fact, has more than 200 bridges, and central London itself has 21 of them. Number 34. Charles Dickens was also born in England. Um, he was born in Portsmouth in 1812. Um, he writes, uh, Oliver Twist, a 
Christmas Carol and Great Expectations. Number 35, England had the world's first public park. So public parks are found all across the world, but the first one was in England. Um, this park was designed by Joseph Paxton and opened on the 5th of April 1847. Um, and it's in Birkenhead in Merseyside, quite near Liverpool. 36. The world's first public flushing toilet was in England. A bit of a weird one, but um, but yeah, George Jennings, an English sanitary engineer and plumber, is credited with inventing the first public flushing toilet, um, and that was in London in 1851. Number 37. Yorkshire, which is where I'm from. Um, those of you who are English probably heard my accent coming through there when I said Yorkshire. <laughs> It's the largest county, yeah, in England. So England has forty-eight counties. Um, Yorkshire, situated in the north north central part of England, um, is its largest co county, and it makes up for um, about eleven percent of England's total land, and covers an area of fourteen thousand eight hundred and fifty-nine square kilometers. Um, it's not the highest populated part, though. That is worth noting. Number thirty-eight. Modern insurance started in England. Um, again, more specifically London. Uh, you'll notice by now a lot, a lot of things go on in London. Um, and it was uh, Nicholas Barbon, who was an English economist. Um, and he set, got the inspiration for setting up an insurance company um, after the Great Fire of London. Um, so he established the first fire insurance company called the Fire Office, which um, was in 1680, and in 1705 it was renamed to the Phoenix Office. Number 39, Guinness World Record started in England. So it says here, the record for starting Guinness World Records goes to England. Um, Guinness World Records originated in 1955 in England by Sir Hugh Beaver, um, who was a former managing director of the Guinness Brewery. Um, I will add, I do like a Guinness as well. It's a very nice drink. Um, number 40, Scaffold Pike is the highest point in England. So a geography fact here. Uh, so you'll find 200 peaks with an elevation of more than 2,000 feet in England. Um, but the highest point in England is located at Scaffold Pike. And it has a height of 3,209 feet above sea, uh, sea level. Um, it's located in the Lake District, also in the north of England. Um, again, if you ever do visit England um, and you're not wanting to go around London and, and see the city, um, I would really, really recommend the Lake District. It's beautiful. I've been to the Lake District probably... I bet it's probably ten times I've been to the Lake District and it's just beautiful. Beautiful place. Um, obviously... Before visiting anywhere, on my advice, maybe I'll look at some photos online and things, but it is a beautiful place. Speaking of the Lake District, Windermere is the largest natural uh, lake in England. So England has more than 6,000 lakes, um, but the nat largest natural lake is Windermere, um, which is, again, in Cumbria in the Lake District. Um, I've actually swum in Lake Windermere before. <laughs> um, so the lake covers an area of 17 square kilometres, and it has a maximum depth of 209 feet. Number 42. The London Eye is a giant Ferris wheel. Um, one of the most iconic things to see in London, of course, is the London Eye. Um, so this was open to the public on 9th of March 2000. Um, and it's the tallest Ferris wheel in the entire of Europe. Um, and it has a height of 443 feet and a 394 foot diameter. Um, when it was built, it was the largest Ferris wheel <coughs> in the whole world. Um, and apparently it sees over 3 million annual visitors and it's the 8th highest earning tourist attraction in the world. I didn't know that. Um, the English flag is just a red cross on a white background. Um, the other flag you might have seen, which is the blue one with the red um red white as well um that one is um the flag for the united kingdom rather than just england itself uh, number 44 
the Industrial Revolution began in England. Um, so the Industrial Revolution changed the trajectory of the world. Um, it was also started in England in the 18th century, so around 1760. Number 45, uh, Rosetta Stone is located in the British Museum. So it doesn't mean the, um, the app that allows you to learn different languages. Um, Rosetta Stone is a, a slab of rock. Um, which is it says it's a slab of rock with a decree issued on it in Memphis, Egypt, in 196 before Christ, BC. Um, so it has inscriptions from three different scripts: ancient Greek, Demotic, and hieroglyphs. Um, therefore, uh, this rock is important as it helped to decipher the ancient Egyptian script. Um, it says in 1972, Rosetta Stone was kept in Paris Louvre Museum uh, for a short amount of time. Um, however, since 1802, it's been kept in the British Museum. Number 46, another person born in England was Jane Austen. Um, so, obviously, she does a lot of um, old school romance novels, things like that. Um, so, she was born December 16th, 19, sorry, 1775. Um, and that was in Hampshire. Um, she's obviously got very famous books like Pride and Prejudice, Sense and Sensibility. Uh, characters from her books like Mr. Darcy. Uh, number 47. The Oxford English Dictionary took 70 years to complete. Um, so the Oxford English Dictionary started in 1857, of course, in Oxford. Um, under the editorship of James Murray. Um, and the whole project took about 70 years and was completed in around April 1928. Number 48, a fun one here. Um, there's a town in England named Sandwich. Um, so, however, Sandwich, the town, is not named after the dish. Instead, the name uh, originates from Anglo-Saxon word, um, which translates to a sandy place. Um, so no sandwich-related history from this place. <laughs> However, the sandwich did originate in England, um, so the idea of putting food between bread likely emerged in the Middle Ages. It gained popularity in the 18th century. In 1762, um, the fourth Earl of Sandwich accidentally discovered a sandwich. Sorry if I just tapped the mic there. Um, yeah. Excuse me. Number 50. The Great Plague of London is a tragic event in England's history. So, uh, the Great Plague of London took place between 1665 and 1666. It was the last severe bubonic plague e epidemic that killed almost 15% of London's total population. It cost the lives of over 100,000 people in London alone. Um, it was carried by fleas and rats um, across the city. Number 51. An English mathematician invented the concept of the modern computer. So, Charles Babbage, an English mathematician born in 1791 in London, came up with the idea of a computer all the way back then. Um, he studied at Cambridge University and created the analytical engine, which is uh, the predecessor to today's computers. Uh, number 52, London Marathon attracts runners from all over the world. Um, so... It's one of the uh, really biggest sporting events. Um, it's the second largest running event um, in the UK, and it attracts runners from actually runners from various parts of the world. Um, in twenty twenty three, for example, over forty thousand participants ran the marathon. Um, I could have told you this one. Fact number fifty three: England is known to be very expensive. Um, the country is known to be one of the most expensive ones in terms of the. Um, living cost. In fact, the average living cost for a family of four without rent is said to be £2,268. Um, so, as per the ranking, uh, London is the fourth most expensive city in the world. So, um, England itself is very expensive, but London is unbelievably expensive. Um, I like London to visit, but I don't think I could ever live there unless I had a really, really well paid job because it's just so expensive down there. Um, Bristol is known for hot air balloons I didn't actually know this so let's see what it says um, 
Bristol is regarded as the hot air ballooning capital of England. It's because the first flight of a hot air balloon in the whole of Britain took place in Bristol. The Bristol Bell took its first flight on the 9th of July 1967. Again, didn't know that one. Um, I'll move on to the last fact. Um, England had the world's first public railway. Um, so, apart from having the first metro station, the first public railway was also built in England. Um, the Stockton and Darlington Railway became the first ever public railway to the whole world. Um, it was built in North East England and operated from 1825 to 1863. That one I did know. Um, I actually lived in, in Newcastle for, an, for a year, which is the North East of England. Um, and there was a lot of people up there um, who talked about the railway. Um, I also used to get the train up there, so... Um, where I lived in Newcastle, it was really central, so there was no need for me to have a car. So when I moved up there, I saw my car, and I just got the train whenever I wanted to come back home. Um, so yeah, a bit of history there about me and about England. Um, that's the last fact, though, for today, so that's uh, from tourismteacher.com, if you want to check them out for yourself. Um, but I just thought it might be a nice idea, I'd say a bit of gum chewing. I know I've not done loads of the chewing, so um, apologies if you're hoping for more of that. Um, but yeah, I hope it gives you a bit, bit more of an understanding of, of the country where I'm from. Um, obviously, any questions, feel free to ask. I'll ask them the best. I'll answer them the best I can. Um, but yeah, really, really hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, like I say, apologies for the slight hiatus um, due to being unwell. Um, but I am back now. Um, just want to thank you all again so much for your support recently um, but if you enjoyed this video please remember to leave it a thumbs up and um, i'd really appreciate that and if you aren't already subscribed to my channel i'd really really appreciate it if you would consider that for me um, but if you made it this far thank you very much for watching you take care